Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. And on behalf of Pastor Elizabeth and our Crossroads worship team, uh, we are so glad to be together today in the house of the Lord. Uh, Pastor Will is away. He was performing a member wedding off-site, and then he's taking some time with family. Uh, so we miss him, but we will soldier on uh, and bring you a wonderful service that glorifies God. And whether you are a first-time visitor, a long-time member, whether you're here in this space or you're joining us online, we are so glad that the Spirit has led you to this place. If you're here in person, I would ask you to please take those uh, maroon friendship pads. You'll find them at the very beginning of each pew row and invite you to put your name and other information on them and then go ahead and pass them along the row. Um, and take note of the folks seated around you uh, in just a couple minutes, we'll have a chance to greet one another by name. Now, if you are online, you can join us. Uh, let us know you're here via this QR code. Just put your device up to the screen, and it will take you to a very short drop-down menu. Uh, we celebrate when we get those emails coming in, knowing that you have joined us online as well. So please do that. And if you have a prayer concern, we have prayer cards in those friendship registers. We also have prayer cards at the very back of the sanctuary, or you can use the scan code on our uh, prayer cards that are in the back as well. And if you submit a, um, a request in person right here, we will make sure to uh, bring that to the whole body today during our communion and prayers of the people. So just bring it to an usher or put it in the offering plate. Now, just a few quick announcements, ways for you to connect and go deeper into your faith. This is our very first pop-up prayer taking place this Wednesday at 1130 via Zoom. It's a very short, just 15 minutes for us to get together and to pray for the concerns of our community, our nation, and our world. There was a link that was sent out in Friday's email, but if you can't find that, you can give the church office a call or an email and they'll provide that link. So join us in this holy experiment as we make prayer front and center uh, during this season. And also, I just want to extend a final invitation. If you have any interest in joining our upcoming class on what you do best in the body of Christ, it's almost too late, but it's still not. You can let us know by tomorrow because there is a little bit of pre-work that we want you to do, a spiritual gifts inventory online. So if you're interested, again, via Zoom, you can see the info there and on our website. So I hope you will consider joining me as we learn together. Well, with those things being said, uh, now I would invite you to rise in body or in spirit and greet one another in the joy of the Lord. And let's begin by making sure we give a big wave to our folks online. Good morning. Good morning, church. Truly good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Um, I'm excited to be here. I don't know about you, but uh, God is good. He's so great, and we praise him for everything. We thank him for everything, and we thank him for the struggle sometimes because we know that, that comes only to make us strong. So no matter what happens, I will praise you. Please join us. Sing with uplifted voices. Will, Pastor Will is away, so we should be able to sing on key today. And 
church. Oh 
Awesome God, didn't he? Come on, praise the Lord, somebody. God bless you. Yeah, we'll just put him up. We are so blessed by our good God. And one of the ways we connect with God is through prayer. So listen as we read a scripture that tells us about how we are to pray. So this comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Let's listen to the word of the Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. Give us each our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. Do not bring us to the time of trial. And then Jesus said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything out of friendship, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. Jesus continued, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. If there is anyone among you who, if your child asked for a fish, 
would you give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asked for an egg, an egg would you give him a scorpion? If you, then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Will you pray with me? O most holy one, open our hearts and minds to the message you have for us this day, that we might be challenged and changed by your holy scripture. I pray our words are faithful to your word and that you would speak through us, or if needed, speak in spite of us. Amen. Well, even Jesus' disciples needed him to teach them how to pray. So that makes me feel a little bit better about my own spiritual life. We heard in the scripture that they say to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And he gives them this prayer, which uh, has become part of what we say every Sunday as the Lord's prayer. That's right. We say it every Sunday. Our Father who art in heaven. Yes. Don't interrupt me. I'm, I'm praying. Elizabeth, it's God speaking. You called me. You said, our Father who art in heaven. So here I am. What is it that's on your mind? Well, I mean, we were, you know, we were just praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. I guess I never thought we'd get an immediate response. Did you? All right. Go on. <laughs> Hallowed be your name. Hold on. Have you ever thought about what that means? Hmm. Well, hallowed means, hmm, hmm. it means um, it's just part of the prayer, God. I mean, I admit I just sort of recite it from memory every Sunday. So by the way, can you tell me what does hallowed mean? It means honored. Holy, wonderful. Oh, that makes yeah, sense. It does. Okay. It does. So your name is sacred. Got it. Mm -hmm. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wait just a minute. Your? Why aren't you saying thy? Well, your mm -hmm. is more contemporary language. It's a little more welcoming and understandable to worshipers, especially people who haven't been raised in the church. Mm -hmm. A contemporary translation instead of the King James. Yeah. Got it. I'll tell you a little secret. All these different versions of the Lord's Prayer are okay by me. I just love hearing my children's voices. So continue. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Of course. Why not? Well, what are you doing about it? Well, God, we have lots of very vibrant ministries here at this church. Um, and we help our members. We help our community. In fact, we have given... $360,000 to missions last year. But honestly, God, we're hoping that maybe you could get control of things down here, just like you do in heaven. Have I got control of you? <laughs> well, I mean, we're both pastors, right? I mean, and we've given our lives to the church, God. That isn't really what I ask you. What about that sassy sarcasm? <laughs> and what about that Pastor Will wearing Christmas socks all year long? <laughs> I can help you all. If you're truly praying for my will be done, it will have to start with you as pastors and with this mm -hmm. congregation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess there are a few things I need to work out. Now that you mention it, I probably could name some others, too. So could I. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
well, God, I really would like to change some of these things. Be free of some of the um, burdens that I carry in my heart. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. I can change your heart and lighten your load. Mm -hmm. I love you, and I want only what's best for you. Okay, thanks, but uh, look, Lord, we need to finish up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. Give us this day our daily bread. You need to stop eating more than your share of daily bread. <laughs> your metabolism is not what it used to be. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, are you saying that I'm fat? <laughs> Here I am doing my daily praising of you, and now you're just reminding me of all of my faults. Praying is a very dangerous thing. You could end up changed, do you know? That's what I'm trying to get across to you. You called me, and here I am. <laughs> It's too late to stop now. Keep on praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. I'm, I'm scared too. <laughs> scared of what? I, I know what you'll say. Try me and see. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Mm -hmm. What about your neighbor? See, I knew you would bring him up. Lord, he drives me crazy. He just blathers on and on with his crazy attitudes. I wish he would just move. Mm -hmm. You know I'm building a wall, so I don't have to yeah. deal with him anymore. Yeah. Well, at least you're honest. But it's not much fun carrying around all that load of bitterness mm -hmm. inside, is it? Yeah. No. But I'll feel better once my wall is built. <laughs> and then I won't have to see my neighbor anymore. You will not feel any better. You'll mm -hmm. feel worse. Revenge is not sweet. Mm -hmm. Think of how unhappy you really are. Mm -hmm. But I can change all of that. You can? How? Forgive your neighbor. Then I will forgive mm -hmm. you. Then the hate and bitterness will ease. You may not ever agree with your neighbor's opinions, but you will have settled your heart. And eventually, you will learn to love your neighbor as a child of mine. Mm. Well, that doesn't sound easy, but I mean, deep down, I guess that really is the right thing to do. It's worth the effort. God, thank you for helping us to work through this prayer. And, and lead, lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, prayer is a spiritual discipline, isn't it? We have to pray regularly in order for it to become just a natural part of who we are and what we do. It becomes a resource that we can draw upon in good and in bad times. You've, you've been there. You know that feeling. And I really think that's what Jesus is telling us in today's text. And that's what God was just telling us in our time of prayer. So do you have a certain place that you go to pray mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Jesus? Yeah. Do you have a sacred space in your home or a certain location you go to when you pray? Often for me, I pray in my office. I light a candle mm -hmm. and sit in quiet. Or sometimes I pray when I walk on the beach mm -hmm. and listen to the continual movement of the waves and it reminds me of God's power and unending yeah, love. I love that. And what about the, the times and the reasons mm -hmm. that we turn to God in prayer? I mean, certainly when we come to church and we worship in the sacred space and online as well, that's a time. But how about um, when things get rough or when you're going into a very important meeting or a conversation with somebody that may be difficult? 
have you ever thought about praying then? Um, I'm going to challenge you, just as I think we are challenged, mm-hmm. to make that a real habit. Think about this week, maybe, if you don't already, when you get before you even get out of bed to offer a prayer, or when you have your morning coffee, or at night before you try to sleep, uh, do those wows and pows, the things for which we are so grateful And maybe those things that just got us right here, maybe things we did wrong, offer those to God, and I bet you'll sleep a lot easier. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I notice that many of us tend to pray when we are in a certain place Mm -hmm. in our life, when we hear life-altering news. I want a divorce. Hmm. Or your biopsy indicated cancer. It's those times when life knocks us down, when Mm -hmm. we completely lose control and we're at a loss of what to do. Mm -hmm. And things seem to just spiral down. When we turn to God, we can find peace and comfort. Whatever your certain place of prayer is, whether it's a location or a setting or a situation, Jesus teaches us that praying needs to be persistent. That's so true. I mean, I love that you said that because praying isn't just like we put our coin in the vending machine and we get our response. No, Jesus is telling us here that what we have to do is Bang on God's door and keep those prayers coming until we get a response. And I would just add, it's great when others pray sometimes on our behalf. Maybe we can't even find the words. And that persistence makes a difference. And prayer is more than just asking for things. Prayer is praise and thanksgiving, conversation and questioning, arguing and lamenting. But prayer is also asking God for what we need most. It's being honest about our needs and trusting God's goodness. That's right. And in light of Jesus' statements about prayer, knock and the door shall be open unto you. Seek and you will find. I can see how unanswered prayers can really set us up for a crisis of faith. Um, I can see that we would start wondering, okay, so who's failed here? Is it me Mm -hmm. or is it God? Maybe God really doesn't answer our prayers. Maybe he isn't listening. Maybe he's not even real. Mm -hmm. Or we might think, you know, maybe I didn't pray hard enough. I didn't Mm -hmm. use the right words. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, maybe I was asking and I should have been listening. And that can be really tough. I mean, I've seen that in my ministry, haven't you as well? Yeah, yeah. But Jesus asks us to trust that God knows what's best for us and provides what we need Mm -hmm. for the day, our daily bread. Just as a loving parent doesn't give their child everything they ask Mm -hmm. for, Mm -hmm. it's the same with God. And the good news is the power of prayer isn't dependent on the words that we say. Our prayers are powerful because of God. Mm -hmm. And God is so gracious to us. Even when we don't know how to pray, God's loving, healing presence Mm -hmm. is with us and will transform our lives through Mm -hmm. prayer. And even if we don't get exactly what we want, praying the way that Jesus taught can help make this world a little more like it is in heaven. That is good news. (laughs) That's great news. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, as we prepare now to receive our morning offering, I want to thank you, as always, for your generosity. Uh, Every time you give, whether it's putting something in the offering plate, giving online, uh, texting, whatever, supports the missions and ministries of our church 
to change lives and make disciples. And one of those ministries is the work of our board of deacons. And one of those specific initiatives that will be coming up is our prayer project um, that begins uh, soon in, in June and will go through July and August. So we've got a brief video. Uh, friends, you can come up if you want. That's okay. We've got a brief video. I want you to listen because uh, just listen. You'll love it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Edwina Dunlap, a deacon here at First Presbyterian Church. We're introducing the prayer project for this upcoming summer. The prayer project is part of the deacon's prayer ministry where we raise prayers on behalf of every church member at First Presbyterian. It was very successful last year with 95 volunteers participating. It serves as a reminder that all of us need prayer and that we are all connected. Volunteers are asked to pray for about eight to 10 church families during the months of July and August. Caroline Johnson and Dave Jecklin are two of the volunteers who participated in the prayer project last summer. How do you pray for people you don't know? <laughs> I simply pray for what transcends and underlies all of our life circumstances. Lord, please give Susan knowledge and love of you and give her your peace as she navigates her path today. Or I pray the 23rd Psalm using the person's name. The Lord is Bill's shepherd, he shall not want. And of course, I use the Lord's prayer to pray for others. Helping with the prayer project has been a really a great joy Knowing that I am praying for our, to our Holy Father regarding the members of this congregation has been hugely uplifting. Although I don't know most of them or their mm -hmm. struggles or their gifts, I have gained so much through this experience. To volunteer to pray for other church members with the prayer project, you can call the church office at 843-681-3696 or you can go to the church website at FPC hhi.org and click on the prayer project link. During the last week of June, you will be emailed your list of people to pray for. We pray that all of our hearts will be filled with the joy of God as we pray for others. That is so awesome. And thanks to our own Jane Jude for taking those testimonies and weaving them together. So just another way that you can get involved, that you can give back um, to, the, to, the, to God for um, all that he does for us. So if you're interested, you, you heard, you can call the church office, sign up online, see me after the service, and um, we hope that you will participate. But in either case, now is the time that we give to God out of the thanksgiving and gratefulness of our hearts. So let us do so as we bring our morning offering.
Your grace is more where grace is found is where you are and where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me and where you church we look up to our general presbyters they are not quite god but they are kind of close and so we have our special guest becky albright who is the general presbyter of charleston atlantic presbyterian who was the voice of god today yay so we are so glad you're here and becky is going to uh join with us as we uh now lead the sacrament of communion thank you becky you are awesome you're welcome a pleasure that's right. It's appropriate that God had a southern accent. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> well, friends, uh, this is the Lord's table. It's not the church's table or the Presbyterian's table. It is the table for people who love Jesus and want to love him more. As if this were the only time, and this is the only place, and we are the only people Jesus Christ will meet us here. Mm -hmm. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who haven't been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, not because it is us who invite you, it is our Lord all who long to participate in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus are welcome here at this table. Join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. 
We lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. For in the beginning, you created and called us good. We are grateful. When we had no faith and no future, you called us children, beloved and valued. We are thankful. When we lost our way or turned away from you, you did not abandon us, but instead gave us your grace. We are forgiven. When we came back to you, your arms opened wide in welcome. We are your people. Here are prayers for our world in need, for those who are grieving or in need of healing, for places of conflict and violence, for those struggling to make ends meet, for those suffering with depression, addiction, or anger. We pray for those who feel forgotten or overlooked, for those in need of companionship and comfort, for those not feeling your spirit of peace. And we lift to you now, God, the prayers of joy or concern that we have carried with us today, those names and places that are upon our hearts. Hear them now, either in spoken or silent word. For Linda. Lord, receive our prayers. Remind each of us that you prepared this table for us, offering not just bread, not just wine, but your very self, so that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. So as we do in this place what you did long ago in an upstairs room, Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us your body, healing, forgiving, and making us whole. And that we become for you your body, your hands and feet, loving and caring for the world until your kingdom comes. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, hear now the story of how this sacrament began. On the last night of his life, Jesus gathered his friends around him, and at table while they were eating, he took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and poured it. He gave it to the disciples and said, This is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink from this cup, do so remembering me. So now following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread <laughs> and wine, the ordinary things of this world, which Christ has made special. And we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. This morning, we will take communion by intinction. You will be invited forward using the center aisle 
to take a piece of bread, all the bread is gluten-free, and you will dip it into the cup and partake. And return to your seat through the side aisles. So come, let us keep the feast. The table is set. Let us drink, eat, and be thankful. Done. 
on earth as in heaven. Let it be done right here in my heart. And Father, let your kingdom come. Holy, holy. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Let it be done right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us. Forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. kingdom come. Holy, holy. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Let it be done. Right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Holy, holy. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Let it be done. Right here in my heart. Right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart. In gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, for the need for these people, oh God, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared this sacred food mm -hmm. and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, mm -hmm. expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. So we may live in your glory. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Hey. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh. Father, let your kingdom come. Oh. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, let it be done. Right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, let it be done. Right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily prayer. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. It's 
here at my heart. Here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Let it be done. Right here in my heart. In earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart.